Saturday night in South London, hundreds of young people are gathering for the latest craze, an acid house party in a disused warehouse. Coaches will take them to a destination which has deliberately been kept secret to evade the police. Where, where do you think you're going to? Mystery tour. No, we don't know. It's quite a mystery. That's yeah. the mystery about it. This is Acid Man. Acid House music has been described as a sinister and evil cult which encourages young people to take drugs. One person has died after taking ecstasy, a drug associated with the music. But few people know where the Acid House craze came from and how serious a threat it is to young people. To find out, World in Action has spent a weekend with all sides of this controversial music scene. It's a weekend which ends in confrontation as the police step up their campaign against acid house parties. But when it first started, it was really different. The music was like nothing else, really, that had been around. Most of the time, my parents don't really know that I'm going to an illegal warehouse party. I'd just say it's a warehouse party and they don't ask me whether it's illegal or not because they don't really know about those sort of things. OK then, see you later. Bye. Been to a few warehouse parties in Watford. When you walk in, it's different because it's all packed. People are all wearing different clothes and um, in general the atmosphere is just so much better because you know that it's not straight and policemen could walk in any time. My parents aren't worried about like warehouse parties, but only acid parties, because they think there's going to be more, you know, there's going to be drugs going around the acid parties, but not like the normal warehouse party. I like acid because it's all freaky. You can move around a lot to it. Clothes are all loose, it's just generally a laugh. You can dance in clothes that are related with acid because you can just wear jeans and trainers and all that sort of thing. They're not stupid like things like tight skirts and high heels. While Acid House, or even if you abbreviated to house music, started way back in about 83 in Chicago uh, in a club called warehouse where a DJ called Frankie Knuckles was experimenting with a new form of music. People called it house music because it was originally played and created at the warehouse. But in Britain it was immediately assumed that the music was linked with drugs because of the use of the 70s smiley symbol and the term acid which can refer to the drug LSD. Acid house, as we know it now, is, is a slang term from Chicago, which actually means sampling. Uh, the Chicago producers and artists used to call it acid burning. When somebody had uh, taken a line or sampled a piece of somebody else's record and used it on their own production, uh, that's where the term acid house came from. <laughs> Morning London, you're listening to Studio FM on 92.7 and I'm waking you up with a bit of house style acid. We've been hearing a lot lately in the press about how bad acid music is. We know different. We know it came from Chicago about two and a half years ago. We know the music is good and that we all enjoy it. London is pumping at the moment to the sound of acid beats. Also in Manchester, the beat is sounding hard as well. The music is firing. And this goes out to the newspapers and the media. Acid isn't all bad. Sometimes you wear smiley t-shirts and that, like we're not and we saw them all and we thought, yeah, but then everybody started wearing them, so we didn't bother wearing them then. So acid badges and that. The pop music scene has always been linked with drug abuse, and concern increased when some acid house fashions appeared to encourage young people to experiment with drugs, particularly one known as ecstasy. Hugh Duffercy advises the Health Education Authority about drug abuse. He's been gathering information on ecstasy from officially backed drug advice centres. It's not as dangerous um, as other drugs that create physical dependency. Um, its dangers are primarily to do with the psychological and physical effects. 
Ecstasy is a non-addictive stimulant which was first developed in 1914 and has been used to help patients with psychological problems. But there are fears that it can cause brain damage. Three years ago it was made illegal when people started abusing it. With sustained use it can cause exhaustion. Um, it can cause people to become anxious and in a combination the anxiety coupled with contact with emotions and feelings that ordinarily they haven't been in contact with can create depression. In early November a young woman died after taking two tablets of ecstasy. It was the first death of its kind. The tragedy made Acid House Party's front page news. The coverage gave ecstasy a similar profile as drugs like heroin and cocaine, which are responsible for hundreds of deaths each year. It is a serious drug of abuse. Uh, the actual misuse of it in this country, I, I must concede, there's certainly an increase this year. But it, it's certainly nowhere near the epidemic that has been portrayed. The, the media has tended to suggest that every acid house party has drugs. I mean, that's, that's arrant nonsense, I would suggest. And equally, I mean, on the, the occasions where drugs are found at these parties, it's not just ecstasy. It's, it's all sorts of drugs. Uh, any, any place where youngsters congregate, whether it be the local pub, I mean, uh, you may well be able to get drugs there as well. They're no more likely to come in contact with dangerous drugs at an acid house party than they are in local pubs, local clubs, local discos. Um, young people, if they're looking for drugs, will locate the arena in which they're being sold in. Our laboratory, for example, up to the end of August, had seized or had seen approximately 600 cases of cocaine, 600 cases of amphetamine and 700 cases, I think it was, of heroin, those sort of figures. And up to the end of October this year, they had only seen 51 cases of ecstasy. And because of the special attention that we've been having, I, I looked at those 51 cases personally. And many of them were just single tablets, sometimes half a tablet. It's up to the person. I mean, if you get offered drugs, it's up to them whether they want to take them or not. It's nothing to do with, it's nothing to do with anyone else. But if they want to, I think they're stupid, but it's up to them. There's going to be like drugs at all parties. It doesn't necessarily have to be an acid party. This is true. Thing. I know, you up. It's, I know people who things. have taken it and it's affected them for like a week and people who have taken one never take it again because it's really bad and you hallucinate. And, so it's uh, like a nightmare, doesn't it? Yeah, and everyone's someone that, coming in to get you. Someone that I know reckons that he's ruined their whole life since they took it and never again, you know, warn you never ever to do it ever. ever. Drugs have got nothing to do with the music, it's just the same name. There's been drugs sort of all through all through every trend, like the mods used to take all loads of drugs, pills and everything, she used to pop them all the time and they just, most of our parents were like mods or rockers or whatever and they used to drink and take drugs and everything but now it's, now their parents, they're saying that we're not allowed to go to parties and that because of, because of acid, because of the bad press. Acid music has had some commercial success, with records like this one, we call it Acid by D-Mob getting into the top ten. But the link with drugs has hindered their chances of further success. Gary Hazeman, singer with D-Mob, says that since the controversy, 20 engagements have been cancelled. Their video was shown twice on Top of the Pops and was then banned. The producer banned all records with the word acid in the title or lyrics. The lyrics actually say, you know, if you thought it was a drug, now you know you're wrong. You know, we, we done, when we were making the record, we done this because we, we kind of saw the drug overtones which were about to happen, you know, in a sense. I've never taken drugs. I don't even drink, you know, so why am I going to make a, a record telling people to go and take drugs? No, I don't do that kind of thing. I feel sorry for the kids who are out there, who are drug free, who like acid house, or whatever you call it, house, whatever, and they like to dance, wave their hands in the air, and their parents thinking, God almighty, are my kids on drugs? And that is only from a certain newspaper. What would you say to reassure parents who are worried about letting their kids go out at night now? Well, if you've brought your children up properly, and you love your children, and you know your children, you'll know if they take drugs or not. You don't need acid house to make them take drugs. The ban on top of the pops gave the impression that the BBC had banned acid house music completely, making it even more unacceptable to parents. 
I can categorically say that the BBC has not banned acid house music, and in particular Radio 1 certainly hasn't banned acid house music. Uh, what has happened is that the Top of the Pops, uh, the BBC's uh, premier pop show, has decided not to play uh, tracks that have uh, references to the word acid. Uh, we, on the other hand, uh, decided uh, to carry on playing acid house music because uh, we've been aware of this for some 14 months. It's almost a bit of a storm in a teacup, really, after quite uh, such a time. Uh, and we understand what the true meaning behind acid house music and the term acid is in, the, in this particular genre of music. Is it, once more, a, a cynical exploitation of youth culture by the media, merely to generate headlines to sell newspapers? Some newspapers have called acid house music a sinister and evil cult which lures young people into drug taking. The message is certainly getting across. What do you know about acid house music? There's, there's meant to be a drugs related craze. Uh, it seems to be the most worrying thing. And where did you find that out? That was in the paper. Do you think it's a, it, anything it, to do it, with a certain religion, do you think? No. Is there anything like that? No, it's no, more to do no. with a kind of a drug, isn't it? Yeah, well, those that take it want to be, all be ashamed well, of themselves. I presume they do frenzy dancing, that kind of thing. Um, probably out of control, not behaving like normal. Uh, normally they would because they're under um, the effects of the drug. I've just read about it in the newspapers that um, acid house music, I assumed it was something to do with the drug scene. It must affect the brain in some way. Unless it's just the music that does it. it. All knows? them lights flashing don't do you any good either, do it? Oh, I, I wouldn't even go in the uh, pub where them lights are. Oh, because no, they drive no. you mad, don't they? It's one of the, the biggest hypes that have come on the music scene in recent years. And it's the peripheral stories that go with it. Drugs, sex, sensation. Ted Hines is the Sunday People's Acid House correspondent. He's one of many popular newspaper journalists who find it an irresistible story. You're now dealing with parties two or three every weekend in both London, London Birmingham, Manchester. Two, three thousand kids at a time. There's a great potential there. A lot of money involved. And I think money is the key to a lot of the people who feed off Acid, acid House the people who organize acid house parties, and the drug barons, pushers, peddlers, who flock in its wake. Unfortunately, the popular press has moved into the sensationalism of the drug and the scene that it's associated with, and extended the coverage. And in extending the coverage, it's actually advertising. I mean, Saatchi and Saatchi couldn't have done a better job, in essence. Um, and it's the classic problem young people being told by adults that they shouldn't do something are more likely to go and do it than not do it. Um, and I think that's the dilemma the popular press has to confront for itself. The hype is not from us. The hype is, is there in the acid house music itself. It will come and go. As I said, next, next year there could be something else. We are only reacting, not acting on the stories. It was this story that started the present outcry over acid house music. It appeared in The Sun, one of the most enthusiastic opponents of the craze. It was ironic two months later to find The Sun still warning readers about drugs, but exploiting the success of the music by selling acid house t-shirts. Uh, we were approached by The Sun to design uh, a t-shirt for the Bizarre Column. They asked us to add smileys to the design. They gave a full page in the sun, and um, this is the promotion here, um, with the headline, it's groovy, cool, it's our Acid House t-shirt. So they promoted it as Acid House. We were totally surprised, we didn't expect them to promote it as Acid. And then what happened? They cancelled the order uh, a couple of days after the promotion, the order was cancelled. Uh, I think it's hypocritical. I really do. Yeah. It's not just newspapers which have angered fans of Acid House music. A report on News at 10 annoyed them so much that they've made a record mimicking it. Stop it. Sweeping the country's nightclubs. The acid house. Stop it. 
So far, three newspapers have named three different people as the Mr. Big of Acid House. One of them, Tony Colston Hater, has been involved in the organization of six warehouse parties. He's so unhappy at the way the media has reported Acid House music that he's producing a video which he believes will set the record straight. The first time I walked into a really a properly happening warehouse party, it just totally blew my mind. I couldn't believe that this quantity of people could all be dancing together and nobody looking over their shoulder at someone else or thinking, what does he think, or, and no, nobody getting drunk and brawling and whatever. The actual um, tabloid press have really come up with some outrageous fantasies in their stories that just really don't happen. I mean, sex romps, wild drug-taking parties, it's just all laughable. I mean, everyone knows who's at that party. All the police officers who came and looked at my party, the 2,000 people that were there, all know that this is, t this is total lies. The police attitude to warehouse parties changed as press interest in them escalated. Four weeks ago, Colston Hater's party in Greenwich attracted 3,000 young people. It also attracted hundreds of police. You can't do that! Yeah, so why, why aren't you letting it go on? Because we're enjoying the music. It's all about the music. It's all about, about the music. Whole scene. And the and only just reason, and the, the only reason, about drugs, the only reason that you're sitting drugs. here now, the honest truth is the only reason you're sitting here now is because of the sun that have, have literally developed their own story. I'm sure you know nothing about the rock business. I mean, I don't know much about police law, but the fact of the matter is there are very lights, sound crews, lasers, spotlights, heaters, people to take cloaks, people's coats in a cloakroom, there is security. free refreshment, there is security, security, there's fire exits. We don't want to discuss the whole matter with you. No, of course We've not. told you our point of view. Excuse me. And that's the reason why we're acting, as I've said. And one would hope, as reasonable people, as we are trying yeah. to be reasonable exactly. with you. We are exactly. as well. And that's exactly what we're doing. I mean, okay. Together, we can... We can we can come to a yeah, resolution. We can. That's why we went this point to ring. We have tried to, we've given a little bit on our part. Yeah, exactly. We so that you have a chance right. to do what you said that you were going to yeah, do. That's exactly what yeah, we're but doing. I mean, this, to this, assist us we to should, move these yeah, people from these the premises okay. to a safer area. Warehouse parties are now regularly being raided by the police. This party in Kingsbury, North London, was put on by a different organiser. A hostile reaction to the arrival of the police was quickly controlled by the disc jockeys. Tonight's biggest acid house party is to be at a disused warehouse in West London. The venue has been kept secret, but already there are problems for the person in charge of security. There's some friends of mine who are running it, and they've discovered their phones have been being tapped all day which to me is an outrageous waste of, I don't know, police time, home office, money, whatever. What evidence have they got for the phones being tapped? Well, it's quite funny, actually. Um, uh, my friend pick, uh, Jeremy picked up the phone, and there was uh, recordings of his voice um, actually speaking to you from the morning um, coming out of the phone. But it was an earlier party in the peaceful setting of Seven Oaks in Kent which led to the most controversial policing so far. A raid on an acid house party ended in violence and led to over 20 formal complaints against the police. This meeting is being held at the home of Lady Juliet Simpson, whose son was at the party. I can't help but believe these young people. I do think we've got the best police force in the world, and I'm very proud of British police. But there's been too many stories like this, and it 
I think it'd be tragic if the police went down the route of control by violence. The party was in a derelict house in a business area of Sevenoaks. At midnight, about 60 policemen arrived. A group of them burst in to search for drugs. It was alleged that none of the group were in police uniform. And the first thing I saw, uh, well, what I appeared to be was a bunch of hooligans coming, charging through the door uh, with big black sticks uh, flailing in the air, uh, shouting, get on the effing floor, you lowlifes. The people that didn't get on the floor immediately were just beaten on the floor, beaten to the floor. Uh, it was incredible, incredibly mindless violence. With me, they were physically um, hitting me, although not with clenched fists. They were pushing me in the face, hitting me around the ribs, um, and generally, it seemed to me to be, they, they were trying to provoke me. They were beating me as they took me out. They weren't just um, roughly handling me. And any, other, any policeman that I passed on the way were taking a good sort of potluck punch at me as well. They were manic in there, and it just terrified me and everybody who was there. I was really frightened. Six people were charged with public order offences. Because of these charges, the Kent police declined to appear in the programme. They said that three policemen had been injured and denied that any police officer had used unnecessary violence. So far, nobody has been charged with drugs offences. Don't you think it's important that if the police fear that offences, whatever offences, are being committed, that they should go in and attempt to do something about the problem? Uh, I don't think it was a situation to fear. The inspector from Sevenoaks has made this point in our local paper that his young officers had to face a terrifying situation. Well, my response to that would be there's nothing terrifying about going in somewhere and seeing people dancing and girls sipping wine. The police knew there was going to be a party and they could have stopped it getting going by patrolling the grounds in the early evening so the music wouldn't have been set up, then there wouldn't have been a party. Instead, someone must have made the decision to let the party get going and then break it up. Some people involved in acid house music accuse the police generally of overreacting to the press stories. I, I don't think police overreact. I, I think we, we are faced with a situation that, that uh, parents and, and uh, social organisations read this uh, publicity and say, well, what are police doing about it? There may be other considerations un completely unconnected with drugs. I mean, one has to consider the possible fire hazards, uh, the fact that people have got permission in the first place to be there. There are many, many other considerations that police have, as well as the, drugs, the drug situation. It's another Saturday night falls upon us. In addition to the warehouses I've already mentioned, West Side people, yeah, meet at Catford Station. An essential, get there early. As we all know, the police are going to break it dead early. Um, we've got 20 buses going from all over London. People have actually hired their buses to come here, right to the do. They'll come here, and then the buses will go to the do. It's very steep, as you can understand. <laughs> But the thing is, once we're in there, the police can't stop it, right, because there's too many of us. And people are enjoying themselves. How many uh, people do you think will end up there? Um, tonight, about 4,000. They're coming from Brighton, they're coming from Manchester, they're coming from Luton, uh, Portsmouth, um, all over the place. Only a mile away from the warehouse, the bus is intercepted by the police. The party's been closed down, finished. We know about it, it's all finished. We've taken it all down, completed, completely over. Okay, all we're trying to do now is get people away from the area. Right. That's what the intention is, so now we're going to try and get the bus out. We'll stop. Why is the party finished? Because my inspector has said it's going to be finished. We'll the party. No. If you don't stand here right now, you're all going to go and get nicked. All right, if you fancy that, stand here and go and get nicked and go and call tomorrow if you want to. Dozens of police are already at the warehouse stopping people from getting to the party. Well, 
I think, you know. A lot of the police here are very understanding. I don't think they really want to be here. I think they've got better things to be doing, you know. And um, it, it's just a terrible thing. There's 3,000 disappointed people all going off home. Well, this is really what's been happening every weekend. It's getting more and more depressing. The police told us that nobody had complained and there was no evidence of drugs. The same night, they stopped five other parties in London. The organisers say that in two weeks' time, they'll put on another secret warehouse party and the game will begin again.